All right, so for this mini lesson here, um, we're going to learn how to balance pretty complicated redox reactions, uh, both under acidic and basic conditions. All right, so let's review the tenets of balancing reactions. So this is sort of review from first semester of the class. All right, so question one, is this balanced? And hopefully the answer you said was no, it's not. While it is atom balanced, um, we have one magnesium, one magnesium, one chromium, one chromium. It is not in fact charge balanced. The overall charge on the reactant side is plus three and is plus two on the product side. So this is not balanced. So the electrons are out of whack. And this one would be a fairly simple one to fix. I mean, you could probably do it by inspection which is a fancy name uh, for saying, well, you just kind of fiddle around with it until it works. And you might possibly, um, so let's look at the oxidation numbers here, um, the overall charge. So this is zero, this is, so this goes from zero to plus two. The chromium goes from plus three to zero. So you can see that the transfer, the electron transfer is out of whack. And the magnesium ions lose two, the chromium ions need to pick up three. So you could change, you can make this work by fiddling with the coefficients, which is all you can do to balance equations. And say that I could have three manganese atoms react with two chromium three ions to give me three manganese plus two ions and then two neutral chromium metals. And in this case, um, the atoms are still balanced. Um, we still have three magnesiums, uh, manganese, I'm sorry and two chromiums, and now the overall charge is now plus six on the reactant side and plus six on the product side, so we are balanced. All right, now if you are feeling good about that, let's try this one. So consider an acidic solution. Uh, so you can, you know, put protons or um, hydronium even, and water is involved. So go ahead and balance that. I'll wait. Hit pause. Okay, hopefully you didn't spend too much time thinking about this. Um, that one actually is a fairly difficult one, to, difficult one to balance, especially because it was a little unfair because you actually didn't know what the complete equation was. But this is a lead into a very, very powerful method that uses oxidation numbers to help you balance incredibly complicated reactions. All right, so I talked about acidic solutions. Um, again, so a lot of these reactions rely on um, either acidic conditions because they require protons and water or basic conditions, hydroxide and water. Um, so we're going to go through the acidic process first. And just to let you know what you're in for, this is a very methodical uh, for the acidic conditions. It is... A seven-step process um, and you might want to give yourselves a you know a whole sheet of paper to start working on this um, and we're just going to go through an example point out each step as we do it so I want to start with step one so uh, this is what we did in the previous video you're going to assign the oxidation numbers of every atom in the reaction and our example is going to be this reaction right here all right, so start with the low-hanging fruit. Um, the oxidation number of the monoatomic ions is just equal to the charge, so that iron 2 is plus 2. The iron 3 is plus 3. The chromium 3 is also plus 3. And finally, this one requires a little bit of work. Um, so oxygen is one of those elements that um, is reliably negative 2 when it's part of the compound. There are seven of them. So that, bust out the pen for this. And again, you might need some practice for this. Do this in red. All right, so that means that you've got a total of negative 14 being contributed from the oxygens. Um, now, what's the positive contribution? Now, remember that we're balancing to the overall charge. Well, 
which means that we're actually looking to create a positive 12 charge that is distributed over the two chromium atoms, which means that is chromium in the plus six form. All right, so that's step one. Step two is to split up the reaction into half reactions. So again, uh, we talked about this in the previous video. The oxidation half reaction is pretty straightforward. It is just iron two going to iron plus three. And remember that uh, assigning the oxidation numbers is what told us what the oxidation and reduction half reactions are. All right, and so the reduction half reaction is going to be the dichromate um, becoming just chromium-3, and this is going to be the reduction half reaction because this is chromium-6 becoming chromium-3. Now, don't be worried at this point that these things are not balanced. I mean, clearly we have no oxygen species here. We will take care of that shortly. All right, so step three is to balance anything other than the elements hydrogen and oxygen by inspection, which means just make it work. Now for the oxidation half reaction, we're already good. One iron, one action. And again, these are, again, we're just talking about atom balancing here. And for the reduction half reaction, um, we need to add two chromium plus threes to match the two chromiums that come in in the dichromate. All right, that's step three. Step four, um, you balance oxygens to any side that needs it by adding water. So again, for the oxidation half reaction, um, doesn't matter because there's no oxygen in that one at all. But in the reduction half reaction, we've got these seven oxygen atoms here, which means that we need to add seven more waters. And now that's okay. So that's step four. Step five, um, now because we have added water, that is very often going to add, um, so then added hydrogen, which put that out of whack. And now we fix that by adding a proton to whatever side that needs it. We are here in this case, I'm not usually a fan of this, but in this case, you're better off using H plus as your acidic species than hydronium. Again, the oxidation half reaction, not a problem, but we do need to do it in the reduction half reaction. Um, so we have 14 hydrogen atoms here. We have none on the reactant side. So we're gonna add 14 protons to the reactants. So again, now at this point, all of these should be atom balanced. Um, iron, you know, one iron, one iron, 14 hydrogen, 14 hydrogen, two chromiums, two chromiums, seven oxygens, seven oxygen. So both of these are atom balanced, which is where you should be at this point, which brings us to step six. Um, while these are atom balanced, they are probably not charge balanced. That's what you fix it here. And the way that you fix, the, you fix them is for each half reaction, simply add electrons to the side that has the greater positive charge to make them even out. So for example, um, in this case, the product side, Fe plus three has the higher positive charge. We wanna make it match the reactant side, which is only positive two. And we would do that by adding one electron. And this equals the charge out to plus two on both sides. Now, remember that your target isn't any one particular charge. It's gonna be different for each example, but you want them to be the same. And the other thing is that All right, and let's do it for the, uh, for the other one. Now this one requires a little more thinking here. All right. And so you have to actually just add it up. So on this side, we have two times three or plus six. 
Here we've got 14 times plus 1, so plus 14 and negative 2, so we get plus 12. So we have plus 12 on the reactant side, and we have plus 6 on the product side. So we need to add electrons to the reactant side, and specifically six of them. And so negative 6, positive 14, negative 2 add up to positive 6, as does 2 times positive 3. So at this point, each of them, um, the oxidation reaction and the half reaction, should be both atom and charge balanced when you consider the explicitly added electrons. A couple of other things. Um, you will note that they are, the electrons were added to different sides. This will always be the case. Electrons are always a product of the oxidation half reaction. Remember, oxidation is losing electrons. And the electrons will always be a reactant of the reduction half reaction. Now, this also tells you that the, um, the number of electrons involved in the oxidation process and the reduction process don't match. The oxidation process frees up one electron. The reduction process needs six. So the way that we fix this is, the line, is step seven. Okay, so in case you didn't hear it, step seven. And we are now going to multiply both half reactions by factors that will um, allow the electrons to match up, to bring them to the same number. So what you're looking for, if you think back to, um, balance, to determining the formula for ionic compounds, you want the least common multiple of the number of electrons in the oxidation half reaction and in the reduction half reaction. And the least common multiple of one and six is just six. So if we multiply everything in the reduction half reaction by six, um, and again, if we do it for everything, we will not disturb the atom or the charge balance. So that's gonna give us six electrons. And here explicitly, um, so I'm just gonna do that, six, six, six electrons. And now um, we're going to, in this case, the reduction half reaction, everything is multiplied through by one, and which I'm not going to show. And if you do this right, we're going to add the two half reactions together, and the electrons need to actually cancel out. And six electrons in the product and six electrons on the reactant side will, in fact, cancel out. So let's add everything together. So again, um, I don't think we've had to do this for a while. Uh, the way that you add two reactions together is just put everything that's on the reactant side together and then everything that's on the product side together. And that gives us, so the electrons cancel. That gives us for reactants, six iron twos, 14 protons and a dichromate. And if you add all the products together, we get these six iron threes, a chromium three and seven waters. And you can confirm if you like um, that these are both atom and charge balance. Let's do the atom balance first. Six irons, six irons, 14 hydrogens, seven times two, 14 hydrogens, two chromiums, two chromiums, seven oxygens, seven oxygens. We are atom balanced. Are we charge balanced? Um, so here we've got six times three, 18 plus six more, plus 24. On the product side, on the reactant side, we have um, six times two plus 12, plus 14, and then negative two, which also is plus 24. So it's charge balanced as well. So, um, under acidic conditions, this is now a balanced equation. Now think back to when I first proposed this a few slides ago, I don't think that you would have come to this balanced equation anytime soon. So this procedure is quite useful for balancing really complicated equa equations like this, uh, where many times there's actually a few ways to get this charge balanced, but you, there's only one way to get it, to get it atom balanced. Um, but there's really only one way to get atom balance and charge balance, you know, that isn't, you know, a multiple of this. All right, so one more complication. 
So sometimes these reactions occur under basic conditions. And the procedure is exactly the same, um, except there's one more step. So clearly, if you have a basic um, a, um, basic process or one that's occurring under basic conditions, um, the existence of a of protons is really hard. You know, you really don't want to have that because you have if it's basic, that means you have hydroxide and very very little uh, protons. So the way that we do that is that you add if you've got protons that you need to cancel out you simply add the appropriate number of hydroxides to each side in this way. As long as you add the same number to each side, you will not disturb the atom or the charge balance. And the key thing to remember that hopefully you remember is that um, a hydroxide in a proton gives you water. So if I do that, um, if, I add some if I add 14 hydroxides to each side, the product side now has 14 waters on it. I'm sorry, the reactant side now has 14 waters in it. And the product side has 14 hydroxides. Now, in many cases here, um, when you do this, you will have water molecules perhaps on both sides. Um, so you will need to clean that up. And that's, you know, these seven water molecules will cancel out seven of these 14. So with that in mind, I'm going to clean up the water molecules. The balanced equation is six iron twos plus seven waters plus your dichromate will give you six iron threes, the chromium, and then 14 hydroxides. And the last final step, step you know, eight or step nine, depending on if it's acidic or basic, uh, just check. Again, these balancing questions are ones that are kind of unique that you know if you got the right answer or not. It either is balanced or it isn't. So, you know, check. And again, also make sure that, you know, it's atom and charged balance. All right. Um, I want to give you just one more example here. Um, just to go through it really, really fast. This is iodine with hypochlorite, the active ingredient in bleach, and those reacts to form IO3 and a chloride ion. And generally this occurs under acidic conditions. And I'm just gonna really rip through this. The oxidation reaction ends up being six waters and iodine giving you iodate, 12 protons and 10, electro and 10 electrons. The reduction half reaction, two electrons, um, will give you two protons, the hypochlorite, and the hypochlorite give you water and the chloride. And so if you, and when you go to recombine these, uh, you've got two electrons here. So if you multiply everything up by five, you will get 10 and just multiply the oxidation half reaction by one, the electrons will cancel. And in the end, you will have water reacting with iodine and five hypochlorites to give you two iodates, two protons and five chlorides. And so make sure you can follow that along with all the steps. If you can, you'll be fine. I will not give you anything worse than this on the exam. And that is how you balance really complicated redox reactions. All right, welcome to the next lesson in the ECAM chapter. Uh, we'll be talking about galvanic cells. And so by the time we're done, um, these are essentially batteries, and we're going to know how they work. And talk about how um, the concentration of the stuff in the battery can affect the voltage of the battery, or commonly called the cell potential.